Quebec Conservative MP Maxime Bernier sent another shot over Andrew Scheer's bow this morning, tweeting this about a Conservative immigration announcement. So, after disavowing me last week for raising the issue and telling me to shut up, my colleagues have just realized that this is something Canadians find important and want to hear about. Great example of strong leadership. His caucus colleague, Michelle Rempel, responded to Bernier while announcing elements of her party's immigration plan. I smile because Max has never come to talk to me about immigration. I would also say that my colleague has a choice to make. Does he want Andrew Scheer to win or Justin Trudeau to win? So, are Bernier's tweets dividing his party and helping the Liberals get re-elected? It's time for the Power Panel. Joining me now in Toronto, Amanda Alvaro, President of Pomp and Circumstance. And here with me in studio, Tim Powers, Vice Chair of Summa Strategies, and Kathleen Monk, Principal with Earnscliff Strategy Group. Hi, everyone. Nice Hi. to see you. Hello. Kathleen, why don't I start with you? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? I mean, this latest tweet is definitely the most direct one aimed at Andrew Scheer. <laughs> yeah. And those that know me well may know that I have a bit of a, a saucy mouth and I am a bit of a no. trucker. But the one thing you're not allowed to no. do in my house is say that S word that he said in that tweet. You're not allowed to silence other people. So that so I was I was surprised by the kind of tantrum that Max had today. But what I'd rather talk about, but you can push me back if you want. But Michelle's policies that she rolled out today, Michelle Rempel's policies, were actually there's some actually really good nuggets in there. Like mm -hmm. that's showing the constructive way forward on immigration. Now I certainly don't agree with everything she has to say. On, on on immigration specifically, but thinking through how people can have a pathway to citizenship after they come here through temporary workers. These are actual policies that I hope are debated on the floor. That said, Maxim, it's as I said last week, last week we discussed the same thing. And at that yeah. point... After the initial uh, tweets. That's yeah. right. And after at that point, um, Andrew Scheer still had not actually responded. It was only after your show, Vashi, that he actually kind of, with a statement... I don't think and, he watches and, it, but... <laughs> he's probably not watching, but still. <laughs> and and, and uh, I still say this convention that's started taking place in the next like 24 to 36 hours in Halifax is going to be the place to be with your popcorn to watch what happens <laughs> between Max, you know, uh, Shear and Powers over here who will be whooping it up, yeah. I'm sure. I should note our show will be live from the convention Friday evening. But mm -hmm. uh, Tim, what do you think about that? Oh, I don't know what I think because I want to know what I want to know what Max's end game is here. We all right? do. Yeah. You know, if he's positioning himself for a future leadership run, he's doing it the wrong way with his caucus. Um, the last thing any conservative leader wants to do, or would-be leader wants to do, is have his own party, uh, including his peers, circle against him. He's tweeting up such a storm he's almost becoming so irrelevant in that you know oh, here goes max again another uh another tweet what's it really all about but um is he irrelevant he, among caucus and does that mean that he's does that necessarily no, he's mean not, he's irrelevant he's, among the no the party? he's not irrelevant among the party but he's i think he's starting to get to the point of his tweets are going to make him irrelevant because he's almost wanting so much attention for whatever it is he's trying to achieve. He's not, as Michelle said, Michelle had it right. The only person he's helping right now is Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party, as we've seen in some recent fundraising from there. Certainly, I think, Michelle, you played elements of, of her press conference. There are a bunch of Canadians, we've talked about it here, who do want to talk about uh, diversity, who do want to talk about Canadian identity. That always happens in Canadian politics, but they want their leaders, be they the Prime Minister, Andrew Scheer, or Maxime Bernier, to do it in such a way that it's not done stoking fear, and it's about addressing people's anxieties. Kathleen talked about the immigration policy. I was glad to hear Michelle talk about the fact they want to go on a listening tour, because people do want to be heard. But what Max is doing is not helping anybody. I don't know how he thinks it's helping himself. What do you think, Amanda? Do you think he thinks it's helping himself? Well, you know how much I like to be here and agree with everything that Mr. Tim Power says, but <laughs> that's not happening today. I think that he is totally relevant. I think that everything he's doing is positioning himself to be front page, be the topic of conversation, be the center of attention. He's kind of adopted the Trump effect. Mm. The more provocative his tweets, the more we all talk about it, the more his colleagues have to weigh in, then it becomes a colleague to colleague, peer to peer battle, and we end up having him as the center of our conversation. We also know that he's done really well when it comes to fundraising. So he hasn't parked himself out of the party. He, In fact, he's shoring up the attention, potentially the support of a whole swath of individuals who like the way he talks about it, likes how candid he is, likes how prepared he is to take on some of what 
others may consider really tough issues. Uh, I think Michelle Rempel was was right today to suggest that he's giving more giving more airtime or giving more opportunity to Trudeau and the Liberals. But she did the same thing. Instead of talking about policy, which she did for a certain amount of time, what ended up being the headline today, the thing that we're all talking about, is how she suggested that Max hadn't come to her first. And so it becomes the battle, the peer-to-peer -peer battle, versus some of the policy ideas that she had hoped to put in front of everybody. To be fair, though, that the, the bulk of that, I mean, she was asked about yeah. Bernier. The bulk of what she initiated in that press conference was about saying what their policy But she was asking, actually, Michelle Rempel posed the question, you've got to choose, Max. You've got to exactly. choose. Do you want Trudeau or do you want, um, uh, you know, uh, Sheer to win? And I'm choosing Sheer is what she said very clearly. But I think, actually, there's another option. Like, strategically, what we have right now is two men, two, mm -hmm. you know, white men, if I may say, in the Conservative Party arguing uh, uh, amongst themselves. There are opportunities, strategic opportunities for other parties in that. First of all, mm -hmm. it's a possibility that Maxim, maybe he's going to break off. Who knows? Sheer has said that he's not uh, right now planning on unilaterally kicking him out of caucus. That's a decision he would put to the members. They would do that as a team. That's Sheer's statement. And so what if they don't actually move to kick out uh, Maxim out of caucus? What They're happens? certainly not saying they want what to publicly, what if, right? What if Maxim yeah. creates a splinter party? You know, what if um, Jagmeet Singh jumps into the fray and, and takes up some of the immigration and actually tries to address in a more mm. uh, policy-focused way some of the concerns that Canadians are voicing around the immigration policy? But here's the problem with what Max is doing, not only for the Conservatives. If Max really wants to launch a critique about the Prime Minister and he wants to talk about um, the woes and, and challenges that many people have with the so-called virtue signaling, he's gone about that all the wrong way because as we are all covering the story, the story is about the fight between Maxime mm -hmm. and Scheer. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister is laughing. Nobody's going after him for virtue signaling. It's about the Tories being back to where they were in the dark old days in, you know, just after, just before unification when there were certain Reform Party members who had a prehistoric view of the way Canada was. If Max wants to lead a smart, capable debate about what's wrong with the way Justin Trudeau sees Canada, he shouldn't be doing it by going after Andrew Scheer. Uh, because yeah. it only looks like he's trying to cut down Andrew Scheer and surpass him. It, and it takes away from the issue it because does. it becomes a power play about these two, not a critique of the government, which is welcome. So, so, so Amanda, how does Andrew Scheer handle the next, you know, 72 hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think he has to try to navigate some of mm -hmm. his own uh, communication. And one of the things that has been really kind of the signature of the Conservative Party for years, I would say that it hasn't been in the last number of months, has been communication discipline. Yep. And that has has literally fallen by the wayside and given way to all of this infighting, um, some of which is now a very public fight. And I think that part of what the party needs to do is rein that back in again. The problem is when you have a rogue figure like Maxime Bernier, who's prepared to go all out, doesn't care what the consequences are, has actually lived the first consequence, you are in a very tough position. So you need to try to nav and think, navigate. And I think part of the way that they've tried to do that is put someone else in the picture. So allow Michelle Michelle Rempel to take some of this. She is she is not shy and she is no stranger to combat. She likes being in that combative position. She simply can't resist. So I think that they, they're trying to position some of their key figures, people who they know can really take on the communications challenge and be seen to be strong advocates on the party line. There's just another political actor that we haven't talked about in, in this discussion, and that's Premier Couillard. Tomorrow begins the yeah. Quebec yeah, election, election, right? And it runs out to October the 1st, mm -hmm. right? And these issues around immigration, I mean, lots of the irregular crossings are happening at Roxham Road, and so mm -hmm. we know... The majority. The majority, exactly. And so this is an issue that's brewing in Quebec, and we're entering this election. So mm -hmm. the motivations for Max may be multiple, right? And what is he stirring yeah. up, and what is he hearing on the ground? So Final words, Quebec, Tim. Um, are you suggesting Max is leader of the Liberal Party of Quebec would be more coalition avenue. No, uh, yeah, for sure. No, I'm, but I'm just saying just there's highlighting a, that it's a big the issue. I guess is going, issue. going into the weekend for yeah. me, I'm looking at are we going to have another Halifax explosion uh, among <laughs> conservatives or do we leave <laughs> uni or does the party leave unified? For Andrew Scheer to have victory this weekend, he's got to have some unity of purpose and he has to deal with this issue head on when he projects a vision of what a conservative government looks like in 2019. He has to reclaim communication. Yeah, yeah, he has agreed. to reclaim the headlines.